Well, good evening and welcome to Grace Chapel at, at uh, 645 Wednesday night in Benson, Arizona. <laughs> yeah, we just finished uh, We just finished with the, uh, what was the first song called? It was, uh, uh, Blessed Quiet. Blessed Quiet. Yeah. And then what a friend, in, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. So uh, y'all missed out. <laughs> Yeah, so just a couple of things. I just wanted, I just want to let you know, um, uh, the just to, as a legislative update, I just want to just do one little thing, because I want to just bring a single subject up. And the, the one of the topics that I, wa I want to mention is the ESA program. Uh, the ESA program is uh, called, it's called, it's called the Empowerment Scholarship Account that allows the tax dollars assigned for each student to follow them wherever they go in school. And it's actually called uh, the backpack program because it follows them wherever they go. And they can use it anywhere they want for their choice. It gives the parent an option of looking for alternative education. Uh, it frees them up from school that does not fit their needs. And that's really important to realize. Yeah. The parent is best, is the one that's best to determine what is good for the child. Amen. And we, you know, we, we look at that. Parents are now able to take the allocated tax that would go to the public school and apply it to an alternative school, uh, alternative school options, such as homeschool, online school, Montessori school, tech schools, uh, and they also pay for various supplies and services, which is really cool. Arizona is leading. Arizona is the leading state in this right now. And when it comes to school choice, <clears throat> In the, last, uh, in the last legislative session, the Empowerment Scholarship Program was expanded as a full-time alternative to K-12 uh, grade students. <clears throat> it was also founded, uh, funded to provide close to $7,000 per child. Wow. Yeah. So it's been expanded to $10,000 this, this year. We were able to expand it to close, close to $10,000. Right? You know, it's, it's close to $10,000 per student. Parents are able to use this money for tuition, tutors, curriculum, supplies again, and services, as outlined in the ESA handbook. This gives the, patient, uh, the parent the flexibility to provide the best education that fits their child. There are, now listen to this, there are 50,000 new, brand new ESA students enrolled at this time. Yeah. yeah. That means homeschool, that means uh, private, you know, private schools, that kind of stuff that's going on. The competition, I think, I believe that the competition is gonna help drive some of this thing up. Oh, yeah. uh, some of the performances and things like that. Because schools, you know, all schools are gonna have to really tighten up their programs because the parent can go anywhere they want. Anywhere, including public school. I, I, need, to, I need to say that as well. And I'm glad that we're addressing this through our program. Families are concerned about their, uh, their, their children's education right now. They're really, really looking at that from every walk of life. And uh, they are looking at the best option for their children. These options are growing all the time of, you know, online schools, of, of, of blended schools. There's, uh, uh, there's also pod schools. There's all kinds of things coming up. I know, um, I know, I know personally of a lot of, I, I know personally uh, families who are taking that option right now. They're homeschooling or they're going to private school. Mm -hmm. And I know some in Sierra Vista, I know a whole lot of them here in town. Because we were we were uh, we were supplying a lot of their curriculum at one time, and so that they've been doing that. Parents have made their voices heard, and legislature was able to work to get this through last year and expanded it this year. Uh, and there's no reason for any group to have a monopoly in education. That's one of the things that we wanted to have is the competition. As a former, you know, as a former homeschool family, we homeschooled for, or she did. Well, let's see, homeschool was 14 years. No? 12 years? Yeah. And then we figured out that we operated the, uh, the Christian school for 25 years. Yeah, that was how long we had it. I under and so I understand that we understand the needs of the school uh, for school choice. With the sexualization of our children and the craziness that's going on in the public schools, I was happy to support legislation of the ESA program. On the, on the average, parents are not happy with the social pressures that are being placed on the schools right now. The public schools are being pressured to give in to ideologies that parents do not agree with. And what you read in the Bible, in Proverbs 22, 6, 
Train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. Amen. And th for this reason, I encourage parents to apply for this program. All you have to do is go to azed.gov uh, forward slash, what is it, ESA, and apply. Uh, you can go and apply there. You'll not regret it. And uh, take advantage of that program. Uh, it'll take about a month for you to get uh, uh, your application processed. And once that happens, the money is assigned to a, uh, like a credit card, and you get to use it anywhere you want. Um, and uh, and there's ways that you can pay tutors, and, and there's a lot of things that you can do with it. It's amazing what you can do with it. Again, you know, go to azed.gov forward slash ESA and apply for your ESA monies. Your children's good. future. Huh? Your children's future. That's right. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, and I, I've been thinking, you know, it would be great to be able to get the school started. If, if, if there's any time to start a school, you know, a private school, it is right, right now. Yes, it is. Because, uh, you know, as, as the kids are coming in, you apply, you know, get parents to apply for the ESAs. That'll supply for the, you know, for the, uh, 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 for the school's uh, expenses. When did you go up to 10000 well, Close to 10000 It's about nine, nine plus. When, when does that happen? Uh, it'll, um, that, that'll happen. Um, so the, the 7,000 is available right now, but the 9,000 will be available uh, 90, di 90 days after we sign EDI. Uh, uh, let's see, yeah, the budget. I think the budget is already enacted. Uh, but uh, I think it's, it's 90, days, 90 days after July 31st. So it'll be November somewhere. Right, right at the end of October or November will be the time. So that's it, guys. What's that? That's fantastic. It is fantastic. It is. Yeah. So we, you know, and, and Christians, you know, Christians, we're, we got to get involved in critical thinking and that kind of stuff. And that's why we study the Bible, because the Bible puts a lot of things that you have to think about, especially this last chapter that we're going to be getting into today. Um, this is the end of the book. This is the end of the book of Judges. This chapter is the end. And so we're going to go ahead and look at that. It won't take us long to get through it. Uh, what, we're, what we're facing here is, um, oh, there was a civil war that ensued um, and Israel was very successful because they repented. They repented to the Lord. Uh, a lot of people have trouble with the justice of God or justice in general. I think a lot of people don't want to see other people harmed, hurt, you know, or, or get the consequences meted out to them. Uh, especially when, and especially when it comes down to capital punishment, some of those kind of things, or even righting a wrong, uh, righting a wrong, and we, we found that like in the Revolutionary War and then the uh, Civil War. The Civil War that, that was a lot of deaths that took place, you know, in our country, and brothers were fighting brothers, you know, and family members were fighting family members because they had two ideas of what should happen with slavery, and we find that take, taking place today. And, and it's the same kind of thing that's happening back in Israel. Um, they just they they decided to attack Benjamin because of the uh, because of the rape and the dismemberment of the one woman that had been sent out to the tri tribes of Israel, and it was just an atrocity. And they finally, even though they were doing wrong, they finally finally had, had it. They said, you know, we 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 had it. We can't. We just can't keep li living this way. And so uh, so they went ahead and they attacked Benjamin, and Benjamin attacked back. Uh, Israel lost a lot of lives. They attacked Benjamin again, and then they asked the Lord, shall we attack him again? And, they, and he said, yes, tomorrow I'll deliver them into your hand. And they attacked him so, you know, they, they dealt with that atrocity so fiercely that it left Benjamin without women and children, without cities, and there was only like 600 men that were, uh, that were, that were left over in the tribe of Benjamin. It was one of the smallest but it, it only left seven, seven, uh, uh, 600 men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 600 men that were left over. And so, you know, so the, uh, the man, you know, the, the men then, you know, took counsel and they were, they were saddened. They were, they were saddened and in their hearts that, you know, now they have a tribe that's gone. They, they don't have a tribe that's there any longer. Basically, they kind of wiped them out. And they also had, they also had made a couple of vows. The vow that they would they would not allow the, the you know they would not 
let their daughters marry into the into that tribe any longer. So you've got you know you got 500 men that aren't going to be marrying, and and if they go outside of the tribe, then they're going to be obliterated again. Or if they go outside the nation, they're going to be obliterated again. And so there you know there's some real serious consequences that's taking place here. And uh, and again, we've got to take some some of this kind of stuff seriously. You know the, the, the this kind of injustices. So so the men. Um, and I was I was trying to find this because uh, um, one of the things that I've noticed, and you notice this, you know, even even being a lawmaker, uh, you know, we've had discussions, uh, we've had you know the committee meetings, and there's 80 people there, and they're talking about laws, and you know we got to create better laws and that kind of stuff, and why why do we need more laws and that kind of stuff? And there was one, there was one uh, former legislator, his name is uh, Frank Antonori, had the greatest explanation. He said, laws, he says, uh, laws are intended to tell you what you can't do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go, go figure. I mean, he, he, mentioned, he mentioned the most obvious thing. Laws tell you what you can't do. You know, they started off with 10. And, and God says, you can do it. The rest, you can do whatever you want. As long as you obey those 10. Yeah. And, and there were some other laws too. The Mosaic law then grew and grew. And then it keeps growing. It just kept growing and growing and growing. So it went from uh, God's law to the Mosaic law. Then it went to the doctrines of men, which is really interesting. And we're going to see, we're going to see a little bit of this because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, where, do, where is that? Where is that in the Mosaic law? Did they do? Did they consult the Mosaic Law, or did they just create a law? Right. Well, they just created a law. Nice. It's what they did. You know, just like the oath that they took that they would not uh, allow the people to marry their own wives. They just created a law. You know, this tells you what you can't do. So, so it was really interesting because now the next thing that happened was that uh, it was Je Je let's see, where was that that place that they went up to? Je Jabesh Gilead. The Jabesh Gilead, um, you know, God had God had required all the men to come to the sacred assemblies, and there were seven feasts that were part of the Mosaic Law, where all the men had to present themselves from the age of twenty up. They all had to present themselves at the temple. That was God's law, Mosaic Law. And so what they said was, when they called the assembly, um, when they when they presented themselves in the presence of the Lord. Uh, one of the tribes was not there. And it was Jabesh Gilead was not there. And they were debating, well, what, where are we going to get wives for these guys? And then they looked around and said, one of the tribes is gone. And we had already decided that if no man should, should show up, we're going to go after them. <laughs> and they were in the mood. <laughs> so, so they went out and they, war, they, went, they went to war against Jabesh Gilead. Killed, killed the men, killed all the women and children, and, and left only the women that had not slept with men. And there were 400 of them. So, you know, and, and so, yeah, there's, a, and you know, and pe people have trouble with this kind of stuff. You know, and, uh, and I'll tell you what, there, there have, you know, and I've never been in war. I've never been in war, don't want to be in war. Uh, I know a lot of veterans have. Uh, you know, I, I know that there's been a lot of, you know, just a lot of veterans over the years. They don't talk about it. They just don't talk about what's gone on out there. Um, but they have been through war. And they have seen some of these atrocities. And so, you know, the women and the children being killed and that kind of stuff. We heard some of the reports coming out of Vietnam that, you know, some of the, 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 the things that were, how they were treating the citizens. And that was not only them, but it was our own. And they were being court-martialed for murder in wartime. How does that happen? Well, that's because you need to understand the law. When God says, thou shalt not kill, he was talking about murder. You know, premeditated, I hate you, I'm going to kill you just to get rid of you. Just because I don't like you. Murder. Now, God also outlined in the, in the law of Moses the, 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 what constitutes war, wartime killing. That's, that's not murder. 
It is, it is defending your country. It is going out to war, that kind of thing. So we need to know, we need to understand a little bit of jurisprudence here, you know, because then it justifies what we're, we're doing as a country sometimes. But a lot of people don't take that into consideration. And we need to. Yeah. That's where the critical thinking comes in. That's where we have to stand as a nation and be able to defend its borders, yeah. you know, and, and do that. Uh, you know, that's where a lot of people also have a problem with the Second Amendment. Yeah. You know, they do. But if you go over to the book of Ruth, no, Esther, I'm sorry, not Ruth, Esther. When you go to the book of Esther, remember they were trying to annihilate the Jews at that time. And it was uh, the king that said, it was King Artaxerxes, I guess, that said, you know, yeah, go ahead, you know, whatever you want to do, Haman, do, take my ring, you're, go ahead and do that. And he, he created an edict that the king signed that you can kill all the Jews in, in, the, province, in the provinces of the kingdom, of the realm. And, uh, and then comes, comes along, and then uh, he, he finds out that the queen is in danger. So he hangs Haman on the, on the gallows that he made himself. And then he created another edict. He could not, he could not wipe away that one because that was the way of the, uh, the Midian, Midian? I think that was Midianites. Those kings, once they, once they made a decree, they couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't do away with it, but they could do another decree on top of that. What he, what they did, what he did was he said, "Now Jews, you can go ahead and defend yourselves. Yeah. Take up arms, form a militia, and defend yourselves." And they went ahead. And they went out, it, as in war, is what they did. They were defending themselves. Mm -hmm. So so you know again, <clears throat> it's it's creating it's creating law. How how, how does that all happen? So. <clears throat> So, so they went ahead and they, they did that. They went ahead and they destroyed. So they went after they went after Jabesh Gilead, killed all of the men and women and children, uh, burned down their cities, and left nothing. Well, left basically nothing of that portion because the men chose not to show up. You don't do that. And then and then um, <clears throat> well, I'm just thinking about it in legislature. If you're a legislator, and if you if you're not showing up to work, they can send a sheriff out there to go get you. Really? There was one case that a guy was in New York City and they sent the sheriff to, to go get him. They dragged him from his, his vacation and brought him back so that he could, he could vote on a very, very <laughs> critical bill because he needed to be there. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't just not show up. Yeah. It's, it's serious stuff. So, so what they did, so what they did, you know, they went ahead and they, uh, they sent out the 12,000 men, they killed everybody. And they, they decided that they would just keep these, these, these virgin women. And so they brought them up to Shiloh. And then they started reasoning with each other. You know, the men had started counseling between each other. And they said, well, wait a minute. There's, six, there's, there's, there's uh, 700 men over here. And we've only got 400 women. Yeah. Now what? Now, now they now they came up with an unintended consequence. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like, uh oh, I think we should have saved another three hundred women. Yeah. <laughs> At least, huh? At least. At least. So, what they did is, and and this one is really hard to read in the in the. Uh, it was really hard to read in the uh, in in the, in the uh, uh, in the version that I was reading. And even in the King James and the new, the new King James, the Net Bible, I was looking at that. But basically, when they, when they, when they conferred before them, they said uh, in verse 16, then the elders of the congregation said, so there's elders that are considering some of this. They, this is their city council. This is their, or their, their national council. They are, they are counseling with one another about what to do with a problem again, because they had already conferred before and they had come up with that. And he says, then the elders of the congregation said, what shall we do for the wives of those who remain since the women of Benjamin have been destroyed? There must be an inheritance for the survivors of Benjamin that the tribe may not be destroyed in Israel. However, we cannot give them the wives from our own daughters for the children of Israel have sworn an oath saying, cursed be the one who gives a wife to Benjamin. See, they had just created a new law. Okay. And they, and they were upholding to it, which is really important if it's good law. Yeah. Now, let me, just, let me just stop right there and say something here. In Romans chapter 13, everybody, you know, everybody says you must submit, you know, uh, uh, 
Uh, Hitler even used this one verse. He said, you must submit unto, unto the government because all governments have been created by God. That's where he stopped. Okay? It says that, and if you read chapter 13 of Romans, it says, God ordained government is good for the people punishing evil doers. Yeah. So what's good for the people and, and evil doers come against that, then the law, the, the, those carrying the sword, you know, your, 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 your police have the right to you know, go after them yeah. and get rid of them so that the people can have peace and exercise their right of freedoms and, and blessings and that kind of stuff. People tend to really mess that one up. So that's what they that's what they did. So so they said, in fact, there's year, a yearly feast at Shiloh in the north of Bethel. Therefore, they instructed the children of Benjamin, saying, "Go and lie in wait in the vineyards." Okay, you people of Benjamin, go. It's going to be a lottery. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is amazing. And watch. And just when the daughters of Shiloh come out to perform their dances during the feast. Then come out of the vineyards and everyone catch every man catch a wife for himself from the daughters of Shiloh. Then go to the land of Benjamin and it shall be that their fathers and their brothers come. And, and so that was their answer to that. OK, they were not going to appoint wives to the men. It was too risky because now you're going to have 300 men that were going to complain to them about this situation. And I don't they're pretty good politicians here. <laughs> They, they didn't want to have that complaint. They didn't want to have that complaint on them. And, and it's amazing watching, you know, when just d dealing out there, some people don't want to take responsibility like this. So they came up with a wife lottery. So, all right, men, you hide in the bushes. And when you find a woman going by, you snatch her and take her to your house. What the heck? This sounds like a little bit of kidnapping going on. Human trafficking? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's what they, they did. So go to the land of Benjamin. And it says, when, when their fathers and their brothers come to us to complain, we will say to them, be kind to them for our sakes, because we did not take a wife for any of them in war. For it is not as though you have given the young women to them at this time, making yourselves guilty of your, your oath. Basically, as we didn't have enough. We didn't have enough women. You grabbed one. You didn't take, give it. You didn't give her to someone else in your own kindness. So be patient with us. So they came up with an agreement. This is again they're they're negotiating back and forth, and uh, which worked out fairly well. And the children of Benjamin did so. They took themselves enough wives for their number from those who danced, whom they caught, and then they went returned to their inheritance. And they rebuilt the cities and dwelt with them. Now, uh, there was another version here. Um, and basically, what it says is that they, they were they, they were agreeable to that to that uh, plan. That they oh no the the other portion of that that I didn't I didn't see that let's see I don't I didn't see it here I read it in another version where it talks about that. The men that did not get wives, they were to wait for the daughters of the of the of, of, of the women who have been who have been taken as wives. So those new families that were being formed, the men that didn't get wives, they were going to have to uh, wait until there was a, a wife available for them that was of age, was basically. And it says that they agreed to that. And I'm thinking. Boy, you could see a lot of trouble coming out of that that situation. <laughs> Just knowing human nature, it's kind of like you got one, I didn't. Yeah. I think I'm going to take yours. <laughs> you know, it's just amazing. Uh, but that's the way you know. That's the way the story ends. This is the last story of the book of Judges, mm -hmm. and it ends at that point. Now, if you look at the book of Judges, it it goes it goes downhill. You know, they, they started at a place where they were trying to uphold the law. But the, the further you go into a way, you know, the further you go into the book of Judges, you find out that they are now down at the bottom of the bar barrel. And they're trying to scratch their way back out of the, the, the bottom of the barrel. That's crazy. And it, and, it, and it ends on a very negative note. It does. Because there is no salvation for Israel at that time. I mean, this was an instant where they tried to do some good, 
but it, it just ends at a real real point and and then it says and from there uh, so the children of israel departed there from that time every man to his tribe and family they went out from there every man with his inheritance so they inherited a life i guess uh if you call that an inherit you know inheriting <laughs> In those days, there was no king. And we, we talked about that phrase. In, the, in those days, there was no king. That means that there was no law. So anarchy is reigning in the, book, in, in, in the nation of Israel. When there is no law, there's anarchy. And people will do what is right in his own eyes. That's why in, in the book of Peter, it talks, it talks about to pray for the king. And I'm thinking, why is Peter talking about praying for the king when king when the emperor is Nero? He is lighting Christians on fire and, and you know and, and using them as torches in his patio for for dinner for everything's sake. You know, it's just amazing what's going on there. But I think that you know, as you study through the through the Bible, you understand that God is is you know He's creator, but He's also the lawgiver. And, and he brings order into chaos. Into chaos. And, and that's, that's in the beginning of the Bible, where it says that, you know, that in the beginning, that the, 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 the earth was you know, covered with water and, 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 and the darkness, or, it, or the darkness covered the deep, means it was chaotic, it was chaos. That one phrase right there means chaos. And then God said, and brought order into everything. That's why laws are very, very important in, in that. And that's why I think Peter said, you know, it's better to have an unrighteous, even some unrighteous government because it still keeps anarchy at bay. Anarchy is not good. You know, there's, there's looting, you know, there's, uh, uh, what is that called? What pirates did? Looting, pillaged, and raping. Looting, pillaging, and raping. That's what they do, anarchy. You know, and that's not good because... Uh, you know, there's no honor among thieves and that kind of stuff. There's all of that that goes on today. So it's important that we do have good laws. And, and it's very, very important to have good laws. And so, you know, this gives us a picture of not, I like, the, I like these stories. I love these stories because it shows us the nature of man. It shows us, you know, how, how easy it is to move away from God. It, it, it shows us the consequence, you know, on a society that happens that, that tends to lose everything. And we're, we're seeing some of that today. I mean, you know, the, uh, you know, with the news and the media pushing everything the way it is, it's amazing to see how many, how many of the young people are, are violent and killing people today. Yeah. They raided, looted, and uh, pillaged uh, McDonald's, huh? Yeah. Wow. That is that's crazy. And 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 you know, uh, and it's and it and it comes down to the failure of the family. The family is supposed to be able to pull the kids together because that that's your family, that's your tribe. You're supposed to be able to rely on them. When the family cannot become the support system of those kind of kids, you said 11, 10, 11, and 12 year olds. Yeah. yeah. So the family isn't allowed to be the authority anymore. I, well, the says we are the authority, you are not. Yeah, and that's why we have school choice. Yes. That's why we, we have that so that people right. here can say, no, I'm not going to allow the nanny state to tell me how to raise my kids. In those areas that they say that the parents have no rights, in right. those areas are becoming the violent. Yeah. yeah. No fathers. No fathers. Yeah. That kind, of, that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 so and, and what happens with kids like that? You know, they're looking for that affirmation in their lives. They're looking for they're looking for that support, that affirmation that I'm a you know I'm a I'm a human being. I you know I matter and that kind of stuff. And then they get sucked into the gangs. Even even if they're informal gangs, they're they're groups of kids that are doing this kind of stuff, and then they move in that direction. And society does not know, does not realize that we need to fight that with all we have, you know. And and there's nothing out there that tells you know parents 
and even adults. Look, if you see that kind of stuff forming, you break it up. You break up those kids. You know, and God never, God never intended to, for us to have, you know, like a school, uh, school classes. School classes are all the same age, okay? And, and that's very, uh, you know, like, I, I, you know, when you go through, you know, 25 years of education and stuff like that, they tell you, you know, God never created, God never created a family to be a litter of kids. You know, all 12 year olds, you know, no, they're not. He gave them, you know, all different ages. Sure, you're, you're going to have multiples in there or twins and stuff like that. But th they, that, that creates, you know, that dynamic of I've got I've to answer to someone above me and I've got to take care of somebody below me. Right. You know, that's the dynamic of a, of a family. And when you don't have that and you, and you throw them into this lot, you know, this lot number, uh, you, know, you know, like seventh grade, then it's just, you know, you start building these little, these little gangs and you have to break it up. But a lot of educators are, are looking for that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, the secular kind of educators. Christian, I love Christian edu educators. Yeah. They're, they're the best. <clears throat> and and the, re the real true ones, they're really, really good if they understand a lot of these dynamics. We used to go to the, we used to go to the annual conferences and we did other stuff on top of that <clears throat> to get our certifications. And they would, they would cover all kinds of topics like that. Wow. Yeah, that's why it's important that, um, that's why it's important that, that churches um, understand that we, we have the same dynamic. In churches, you know, we're, we're not, we're, 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 a, we're a, stru a family structure, pretty much. You know, you're answering to someone above and you're also responsible for someone below you. That's, that's the dynamic of church. And, and we're responsible for the success of the family. We really are. And so it's really important. So, boy, we got off on that one. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's really important to get that kind of thing. My kids' schools used to take eighth graders and team them up with kindergartners. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, that's important to do that. Yes. Yep, really good program that way. Really, really good program. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to get God's principles back into the, uh, into the country. Education system. Yeah. Apply for the ESAs. You know, homeschool them. Put them into Christian schools. Start your own school. You know, start your own home pod. You know, that's when parents all come together and they informally get together and educate their kids. They can do that too, you know. We're one of the leading states in the country uh, as far as uh, uh, school choice, and I like it. I really like the fact that we're leading, and we're we were the leading state way back when. I mean, back in the seventies when we seventies and eighties when we started homeschooling. Yep, that's good. Now Texas, New Mexico, California, boy, they're they're bailing uh, uh, homeschoolers. They don't have some homeschool programs. You have to rely on the nanny state. On the uh, on the public school, government schools. Yeah. Yep. They have to do. Used to, What's that? I used to have a lot of homeschooling because I did customers that did that with other uh -huh. ones, so they could share their knowledge and yep. their subject matter. Yeah. But I could see where they probably couldn't have it anymore. But they used to have. Yeah, they used to. Where at? California. California did. Yeah. Now that you got Newsom over there, or, or nuisance, <laughs> Governor nuisance. <laughs> Uh, a Mussolini? Yeah. Oh, Mussolini? <laughs> Mussolini. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for the uh, research. Yeah, we were guys. We were talking about uh, uh, we were talking about the Jewish. Uh, you know, after the dispersed, uh, you know, the, the the Jews have been dispersed throughout the country, and uh, you have the uh, Ashkenazi Jew, and then you have the Sephardic Jew. And uh, there's some folks, I, I, somebody told me that they had, huh? And there's the Abrahamic Jew, then the Ashkenazi and the Sephardic would share okay. lineages. Oh yeah, the Abrahamic Jew, that's what we were talking about, yeah. I hadn't heard the term Abrahamic Jew, I had heard Ashkenazi Jew and the, Ash, and the Sephardic Jew, and you found something about the Abrahamic Jew? No, um, but I know they do separate, the Jews themselves were called them separated in that way. Oh yeah. They do that. But, um, yeah. um, you know, the interesting thing with the DNA is that all, it, it all takes you back to the ark. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. The three. The three. It, it's very interesting. Yes, it is. You know, the DNA 
that are verified the Bible. Right, man. Yeah, it is. Well, God bless you all. Hey, we, I'm giving you 10 minutes off. Man, that's because we're at the end of the book of Judges. That's why. <laughs> next, next week, we'll get into uh, Ruth, the book of Ruth. So we're just going to follow it, and we'll try to bring it into a chronological point in history and see what we can do with that. And, oh, my gosh, this one is so filled with so much good stuff. It is just amazing. So, uh uh, it's going to it'll it, it'll it'll really bring forth the inheritance of the people of God. Yeah, the the whole book of Ruth is is so tied into the inheritance. It is amazing. So, yeah, and it's all covenant. It's all tabernacle. You know, it's all there. So, Father, we thank you that uh, you have brought us through this far in the Bible. Lord, Father, we thank you that we were able to get started in the beginning and have brought it down this far, oh Lord. Thank you for bringing us through. I ask God your blessing upon each one that is here today. God, just bless them. Bless their families, Lord, Father. Be with them. God, uh, make uh, uh, right those things that are wrong. Father, we pray for our children, our grandchildren. Father, for the generations to come. Lord, we, we want to see them educated, uh, firmly established, Lord, Father, in your word to have a firm foundation, oh Lord God. Father, we uh, we reject the liberalism and, uh, and and secularism that's here because it's not really secular or non-religious. We know that secularism is a religion. Yes. Father, we pray, God, that we might be able to educate and strengthen those around us uh, to those facts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right, guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And we are finished. And we are finished.